This isn't sharp cold. Sharp cold bites then lets go. This one stays. Wind drags itself across open pasture. Not screaming, just never stopping. Rain doesn't fall hard, it hangs. It seeps. And wool doesn't drip. Wet wool turns heavy, cold, like damp cardboard pressed against skin. This isn't the kind of cold you push through. In damp cold, you don't die fast. You die because you never warm up again. Medieval shepherds knew that. In the uplands of Britain and Ireland centuries ago, this was just a normal night. They didn't wait for dry nights. There weren't any. They didn't chase warmth. They built a system, layer by layer, to cut every path heat could escape. These weren't tricks. No clever hacks, no single move that saved the night. They were seven small decisions, quiet ones, made again and again in wind, in rain, in wet wool. Each one closed a path. Together they stopped heat from bleeding away. Warmth isn't the first problem. Wind is. Before a shepherd thinks about staying dry before he looks for softer ground, he changes direction. He doesn't pick the driest spot. He picks the quiet one behind a low rise, along a rock face, pressed up against a dry stone wall that breaks the flow, because in damp, cold wind moves first. It slides into collars, down sleeves, across wet wool that's already heavy and pulls heat out like a thin blade. Rain soaks, but wind steals. It strips away the thin pocket of warm air your body tries to keep for itself, again and again all night so the first decision is simple not dramatic just precise cut the wind block the draft close the first door heat tries to escape through you can have layers you can have wool but if the wind keeps moving across you none of it stacks we turn on heaters and expect the room to do the work they did the opposite they used the land like a shield they put stone and earth between themselves and the moving air they stopped the flow so what little warmth they had could stay put long enough to matter, and that one quiet choice made before anything else kept the night from taking everything at once. In damp cold wind is the one that gets in first. Warmth doesn't always come from fire. Sometimes it comes from not being touched. If a shepherd could reach one, he didn't sleep out in the open. He slipped into a hut, low ceiling, dark interior, a doorway just wide enough for one body and a breath. No windows, no comfort, just walls thick enough to slow the weather down. This wasn't a house. It wasn't meant to be warm. It was a shell, stone, turf, earth pressed tight layers that didn't stop the cold but stopped the wind from reaching skin. Inside the air barely moved, no drafts cutting through wet wool, no constant exchange stealing heat away by convection. That stillness mattered. These huts weren't thrown together for a single night. They show up again, season after season, and again, in the same places. Which tells you something. They were part of a routine, a fixed piece in a moving life. We build rooms and try to heat the air inside them. They did the opposite. They made the space smaller. They kept the air from escaping so the little warmth they carried could collect instead of scatter. No comfort, no dryness, just control. You don't need a warm house. You need a shell, one that keeps rain and wind from touching you directly. Fire isn't what saves you first. Distance is. Before lying down, the shepherd lifts himself off the ground. Just a little. A low platform. A pile built up thick. Anything that breaks contact, because wet ground is patient. It doesn't rush. It doesn't stab like wind. It pulls. Wet earth draws heat the way a towel draws water, slow, steady, all night long. You don't feel it happen. That's the danger. Your back presses down. Moisture presses back and heat bleeds away without a sound. So they added a layer, not for comfort for separation. Wood turf packed plants compressed enough to hold air thick enough to keep the earth at a distance. This wasn't about being soft. It was about closing another path. One more door locked. But height alone isn't enough. Your buffer has to hold air. We roll out sleeping pads and think that's the hard part. They built height. 
They built a buffer, a few inches of space between body and soil, and suddenly the knight had to work harder. Not because you got warmer, because you stopped getting colder so fast. That's the trick of damp cold. It wins by time, by contact, by never letting you reset. Wind steals heat fast. Wet ground steals it all night. Dry isn't what they were chasing. Distance was. Inside the hut, the shepherd drags in bracken, ferns, coarse plants pulled from the edge of the slope. He piles them thick, not soft, not comfortable, but high enough. This wasn't fuel. It wasn't meant for fire. It was meant for bodies. Bracken holds its shape when packed. It traps small pockets of air, and it slows the ground from reaching up. Because damp doesn't need permission, it climbs. Moisture moves through soil, through stone, through anything pressed flat. So they didn't spread a thin mat. They built a layer, pressed down, stacked up. Enough mass to keep the wet earth at arm's length. It didn't make them warm. It kept them from getting colder. That sounds small. But in damp, cold small is everything. A thin layer fails fast. A thick layer buys time. We think bedding is about comfort. They used it as insulation. Another piece added. Another path blocked. You don't need to be dry. You need the ground to stop touching you. Fire wasn't what faced the rain. Cloth was. The cloak was heavy, dense. It surfaced tight enough that water didn't rush in. Rain hit then slid. This wasn't soft wool. It had been worked, beaten, compacted. Fulling turned loose fibers into a wall. Not a perfect one, but one that slowed everything down. Wind had to fight its way through. Water had to search for a gap. And that delay mattered because damp cold isn't about one big moment. It's about time. Every minute water takes to soak in is a minute heat stays where it is. Every minute the wind stays out is a minute your body can keep its small balance. The cloak didn't keep them dry. It kept them less wet and that was enough. In a world with no truly dry clothes, less wet is a kind of victory. It was another layer in the chain, another surface where moisture lost momentum, another place the night had to slow down. We light fires and hope the heat wins. They wrapped themselves and made the rain work harder. They weren't chasing comfort. They were closing paths. In rain, warmth doesn't come from fire. It comes from water failing to find a way in. But even the best cloak leaks at the neck. More layers won't save you if the leaks stay open. As the night settles, the shepherd doesn't add clothing. He closes it. The hood comes up. The collar tightens. His body turns back to the wind because heat doesn't leave evenly. It escapes through gaps, small ones, at the neck, behind the ears, along the collar line where wind slips in like a thin blade. You can feel it instantly. One draft down the spine and the whole body follows shoulders tense breath, short hands numb. That's convection at work, air moving, carrying warmth away faster than damp ever could alone. So they didn't chase thickness, they chased seals. Every opening was a valve, every valve had to be shut. This wasn't about comfort, it was about control. And it was quiet, no heroics. Just a practiced motion, tighten, tuck, turn. We zip up and keep walking, trusting the gear to do the rest. They stopped, turned, and let the wind hit wool, not skin. Another small lock in the chain. Another quiet decision that kept the night from finding an easy way in. You don't lose heat because it's, you lack clothing. You lose it because you forget to close the small doors. Warmth isn't something you add. It's something you keep from escaping. When the night is finally sealed, wind blocked ground, held back layers, locked the shepherd doesn't lie flat. He curls, knees drawn in, back rounded, the cloak pulled over and around until it wraps him like a cocoon. Not for comfort, for control. Because air is the last thing that moves heat away. The more space you leave inside your layers, the more air you have to warm and the more chances heat has to drift off. So they shrank the space. They pressed wool against wool, body against body heat, tucked the edges, closed the gaps until only a small pocket of air remained warm, slow held. 
this was an instinct. It was the final lock. After cutting wind, after blocking earth, after sealing the small doors, we sprawl out and try to heat the room. They folded in and heated themselves. No dryness, no comfort. Just a smaller world inside the cloak, a pocket the night couldn't reach all at once. That's what made the system complete. When everything is damp, survival means keeping the warm air pocket as small as possible. Step back and look at it whole. An outer shell, a hut, a wall, a turn back cutting the wind before it can touch skin. A middle layer, a fold wool cloak, dense enough to slow rain, tight enough to hold a pocket of air. A lower layer bracken, a raised bed distance from wet ground that pulls heat like a soaked towel. No dry nights, no miracles, just a system. Built in layers, locked in sequence. Repeated quietly night after night. They didn't chase warmth, they closed exits. They didn't sleep warm. They just didn't let the cold find a deep enough way in. And that was enough to make it through the night.